Welcome to Florida Gulf Coast University, the Division of Student Success and Enrollment Management, University Advising Services, and the Exploratory Advising Office look forward to partnering with you as you begin your journey at The Nest. In this presentation, we will be covering the information that is the most critical as you begin your first semester. We're excited to welcome you to campus. Here at FGCU, you'll be assigned a dedicated Exploratory Advisor or Student Success Counselor for your first year. An Exploratory Advisor is here for you and will offer mentorship, help with your transition from high school to college, and provide you with resources, tips, and pointers to help you reach your educational goals. If you're not sure where to start, always start with your Exploratory Advisor. In high school, your guidance counselor may have chosen and registered you for your classes each semester, but as your academic advisor, we play a different role than your guidance counselor. We assist you with your academic and other various decisions, but the decisions will ultimately be yours to make. We offer suggestions and provide options, but again, we empower you to make all decisions for your educational experience. In order to have a great working relationship, we feel it's very important to understand the expectations of both the student and the advisor. As a student, we expect you to treat other students, faculty, and staff with respect, utilize resources on campus, know general education and degree requirements, demonstrate decision-making skills, discuss challenges you may be having, create and maintain a personal academic file, checking your FGCU email every day, and being prepared and on time for appointments. What you can expect from your advisor is that we promise to treat students, faculty, and staff with respect, teach you how to utilize tools such as the FGCU website, GoFline, and DegreeWorks, connect students to resources, stay current with curriculum and degree requirements, maximize our accessibility, and practice active listening to the students' needs. We also promise to cultivate educational plans compatible with skills, strengths, and life goals, and foster lifelong learning. Welcome to the Career Center and Exploratory Advising Center, also known as the CCEA, located at the red star on the campus map you see here. The entire Exploratory Advising team is located in the CCEA, and this is also where many of your required meetings will be held with your Exploratory Advisor. Group meetings, such as workshops and programming, are typically held virtually or in classrooms across campus. The CCEA is located in the Student Plaza next to McTarnigan Hall and across from Howard Hall. This is also close to the Cohen Center and Library Lawn and the bus loop where the campus shuttle drops off. We also share this building with Career Development Services, a department that will be an excellent resource for you during your time here at FGCU. Our on-campus working hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can reach us anytime by emailing explore at fgcu.edu or by stopping by to schedule an appointment. You can also schedule an appointment by calling our office at 239-745-4422 or visiting our website at www.fgcu.edu slash explore. Next, we are going to cover important information related to your degree, including some college terminology. A credit hour is a unit of measurement that is equivalent to the amount of time spent in class. Most FGCU courses are three credit hours, but some courses are less or more. For every one credit hour of class time, students should expect to dedicate at least two hours of outside of class time studying and preparing for that course. Typically, as a recommendation, for every three hours a student spends in class, that will equal six hours outside of class studying, completing assignments, writing papers, research, and group work for that class. The graph on the right is looking at a student taking a 15 credit hour course load. Note that full-time enrollment is 12 credit hours or more. If we follow the same recommendation, 15 hours of in-class time would equal 30 hours outside of class studying, completing assignments, writing papers, research, and group work for their classes. This totals 45 hours per week of class-related time, which is more than a full-time job. This leaves you 35 hours per week or about seven hours per weekday of available or free time for you. That doesn't include Saturday or Sunday. This is a great time to get involved on campus, become part of a club, complete service learning hours, meet with your friends, work a job, or being a part of your university. This is also where time management becomes very critical to your success. Let's get started by looking at the general components of a bachelor's degree at FGCU. Degree requirements include the general education program, in addition to the specific courses required for each major, including prerequisite courses and electives, which can vary by major. The general education program requires 36 credit hours of coursework, including college level writing and math courses, and specific courses in subject areas, including humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. 
Common prerequisite courses are determined by the state of Florida. Some majors will have multiple common prerequisite courses, while other majors have no common prerequisite courses. Aside from the common prerequisites, each academic department determines the major required and major elective coursework for their program. The number of credits required within the major varies program to program and are usually mostly upper level or 3,000 to 4,000 numbered courses. All undergraduate majors are required to take a sustainability course requirement. This requirement is designed to give students an introduction to sustainability topics and provide experiential education and service learning opportunities. Major requirements are specific courses that are required for each degree with common prerequisites and major courses. Common prerequisite courses for each major are approved by the state of Florida and are common among all of the state university system institutions. Major courses are set by each department at the university. Credits required for a major can vary from 30 credit hours to 60 credit hours, depending on the major. Electives are course options either within or outside of a program that students may take if they are interested in learning additional knowledge or even for a minor or double major. Elective course requirements also vary by major. For example, you may be in a major that has 24 elective credits or a major that has just three or maybe none. However, it is important to always work with your advisor during registration to ensure that you're progressing towards completing your program and to avoid excess credit hours. We'll discuss excess credit hours later in this presentation. The number of specific classes required for your major will vary. Since a bachelor's degree is a minimum of 120 credit hours, this will be a combination of major requirements, restricted electives, and free electives. Therefore, your first semester of classes at FGCU may be a combination of general education courses, prerequisites for your major if needed, and elective courses. Additionally, students are able to complete their Associate of Arts or AA degree, which requires a minimum of 60 credit hours and specific requirements to be completed. Students can work with their academic advisor to learn more about the AA degree and how to apply. There are a few other graduation requirements that will be important for you to keep in mind during your time at FGCU. The state of Florida has a summer enrollment requirement for undergraduate students. Those students who enter FGCU as lower level transfers or first time in college students or FTIC students, meaning you have transferred in fewer than 60 credit hours, are required to complete at least nine credit hours of coursework during summer. This requirement can be fulfilled by any combination of FGCU or transfer credit hours completed during any summer term prior to graduation. You will also need to satisfy the state of Florida foreign language requirement. However, this is typically satisfied during high school if you completed two consecutive years of a foreign language or American Sign Language course. If the student did not complete the foreign language requirement in high school, they will take two consecutive college courses to complete it, many of which are also general education courses. Students entering college in fall 2018 forward must fulfill the civic literacy requirement, which requires completion of a specific American history or government course and or passing an assessment. The requirements for completing civic literacy vary based on when the student initially entered the Florida system as a degree seeking student, so check with your advisor about what your specific requirement is. This requirement is also viewable on your degree works audit. We will work with you to confirm if there is anything else you need to do to fulfill these requirements as you enter your first semester. The number of service learning hours you will need to complete to graduate will depend on the number of credit hours you are transferring in. FTIC and transfer students who have fewer than 60 earned credit hours when they enter FGCU are required to complete 80 service learning hours to graduate. Transfer students who have more than 60 earned credit hours prior to matriculation are required to complete 40 service learning hours to graduate. FTIC students who enter FGCU with a Florida AA degree already completed are required to complete 40 service learning hours. You can check your degree works audit, which we will cover momentarily, to confirm your foreign language, civic literacy, and service learning requirements. Students also must complete a minimum of 48 upper level credit hours, those at the 3,000 to 4,000 level, to be able to graduate, and ensure that they have a minimum GPA of 2.0 in their coursework completed at FGCU. Also, a minimum of 30 credit hours must be completed at FGCU to earn a bachelor's degree from FGCU. We recommend completing a total of 30 credit hours divided between fall, spring, and summer to be on track for a four-year graduation timeline. Now let's cover some important policies you may encounter during your time at FGCU. First, there are multiple majors at FGCU which have specific progression requirements or milestones to be able to declare or continue in that major. 
This may be a combination of minimum grades and prerequisite courses, minimum GPA requirements, maximum earned credit hours to be eligible for a major, a maximum timeline allowed to complete the requirements for the major, or a maximum number of attempts allowed for certain courses. If you have been notified that you are not eligible to continue with a certain major, Exploratory Advising will work with you to select another option. We will talk more about major and career exploration soon, so stay tuned. During the fall and spring, the ad drop period typically lasts until 5 p.m. on the last day of the first week of classes. This is typically a Friday when we start classes on a Monday. Summer, which is a shorter semester, is typically 5 p.m. on the third day of classes of the specific summer term. During the add drop period, students are able to add, drop, change, or swap sections and make any desired changes to their schedule. Once the add drop period is over, student schedules are final and registered courses will appear on the student's transcript. If you are having difficulty making schedule changes on your own, you can work with your exploratory advisor to have the changes processed for you. Once the add drop deadline has passed, if you no longer wish to remain enrolled in one of your courses, you will then need to consider using a course withdrawal. At FGCU, students can only withdraw from a specific number of undergraduate courses without academic penalty in total during their entire time at FGCU. Once these withdrawal limits are met, any additional withdrawals will result in a WF or withdrew failing grade on the academic transcript. WF grades calculate like an F in the GPA, so they should be avoided whenever possible. More information on the withdrawal limits is available in the FGCU catalog. If you ever need to retake a class at FGCU, one policy that may be beneficial to you is the grade forgiveness policy. FGCU gives you the opportunity to improve your GPA by repeating a course and replacing the first grade with the newly earned grade in the calculation of your GPA. In order to use grade forgiveness, the original course grade must be a C minus or less. Both the original and repeat attempts of the courses must be taken at FGCU, and you must earn a higher grade with the second attempt in order to replace the original grade in your GPA calculation. It is important to note that both the original and repeat grades will remain in your academic transcript, but the original course's grade that had the grade forgiveness applied will not hold any weight in the calculation of your GPA. You can do this for a total of two different courses. If you find that you want to take advantage of this policy, you should discuss it with your advisor. More information on grade forgiveness can also be found in the academic catalog. Lastly, you will also want to keep in mind the repeat surcharge and excess hours surcharge policies. If you need to retake a class three times or more at FGCU, there is a tuition surcharge that will be added to your account on a per credit basis. Also, if you have attempted more credit hours than your degree program requires, you may have an additional tuition charge. The percentage of credit hours you are allowed to attempt over the minimum required for your degree may be up to 20% and is dependent on your admission term. Your advisor and FGCU's Excess Hours Coordinator will assist you in determining if this is something you are at risk of encountering. If you have questions about any of the degree requirements or policies we've discussed, that's what we're here for. Your advisor will work with you every step of the way to ensure you understand what you need to do to navigate your academic requirements and progress towards graduation. Now let's talk about how to make a major decision. You may feel close to deciding on a major, or you may feel overwhelmed with all the majors to decide from. Today, we want to get you to start thinking about how to make a major decision and to also share some helpful resources as you continue through your major exploration. Let's first think about some of your passions and professions you may be interested in. Take a moment to consider some of these questions. You may even want to get some of your thoughts down on paper by jotting down your answers to these questions. What do you love? What do you love to do? When do you feel most like yourself? What do you want? What are your dreams? Take a moment to think about these questions. Another important step to exploring majors is to research yourself and reflect on what you're passionate about. You can consider classes you excelled in and subject areas you enjoyed in high school or at your previous institution. Considering these questions can help you find your major. The next step is to consider professional areas you are interested in. You may have a career goal in mind or have a wide range of possible careers you're interested in exploring more. Take a moment to consider some of these questions. What do you want to do? What are you good at? What do your friends and family members say your strengths are? You can also think about some of your strengths and personality tendencies as well. Considering these questions can help to identify your career interests. 
Finding a major where your passions and career interests meet is helpful for creating a pathway for success at FGCU and preparing for a bright future. It is so important to remember that a major does not equal a career. Consider this. By the time you graduate from FGCU, there will be new jobs created that don't even exist right now. More and more, we see that employers are more concerned with the skills and experiences of their candidates rather than what their major was in college. Your major consists of the courses you complete in college, while your career is made up of the various positions you have in your working life. Your major does not equal a career. Your academics help prepare you for life after college, and gaining transferable skills through experiences is key to being successful. Your major, combined with the experiences you gain both inside and outside the classroom at FGCU, will help you to prepare to start a successful career or graduate program. We encourage you to choose a major you are interested in that will help you develop lifelong skills. Remember, most people do not stay in the same job their entire career. In a recent study conducted by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average person changes jobs at least 10 times throughout their career. Your career evolves over time and builds on your skill base. So choosing a major you love and gaining those important transferable skills will help you. Let's take a look at some examples. In this table, you can see examples of three different majors, the transferable skill sets you may learn while enrolled in your classes for these majors, and the careers they may lead to. What majors are you currently thinking about? What transferable skills might you be able to learn from courses in that major? To explore other transferable skill sets and careers based on major, scan the QR code and explore the What Can I Do With This Major resource from Career Development Services. Now that you have started to research yourself, I would encourage you to take this a step further and think about taking our My Plan Career Assessment Test to learn about your personality tendencies and explore potential careers. This is free for you to take as a student at FGCU, and after taking the assessment, you should schedule an appointment with Career Development Services to help interpret your results and help with your major and career exploration process. Another step will be continuing more research about majors and careers to help connect the dots and help get you on your way to declaring a major that is a good fit for you. Make sure to start taking a look through the curriculum maps for majors you are interested in to learn more about the classes you would be taking. Also make sure to check out our What Can I Do With This Major resource that gives detailed information on potential employers and jobs for each major. As you continue diving into your major and career exploration, you can use many other websites, including ONED Online, which is a comprehensive career search tool that includes additional information on skills and abilities needed, education required, typical job duties, and more for different occupations. BLS Occupational Outlook is another great website to use that provides accurate salary and job outlook information. Remember to use our office as a resource too, to help you process your ideas and talk through major decisions and changes. We will also refer you to other helpful resources. Also consider taking these helpful classes, SLS 1301 Career Planning and or SLS 2302 Career Success Strategies, which are offered in fall and spring semesters. When you choose a major, make sure you let us know so that we can get you connected to your next advisor at the right time. Now we're going to transition to talk about accelerated credit. Do you have accelerated credit that will transfer into FGCU? In high school, you may have taken and completed classes, tests, or exams that would give you college credit. There is Advanced Placement, or AP, Cambridge International Examinations, or ACE, International Baccalaureate, IB, College Level Examination Program, CLEP, DSST, formerly known as Dante's Subject Standardized Tests, and Dual Enrollment. If you are expecting credits from any of these areas, please make sure that you have those specific official transcripts and or test scores sent to the FGCU admissions office as soon as your scores or grades are available. This way, you don't take classes that you have already earned credit for and don't need, which will save you time and money. Now is a good time to log into your DegreeWorks. You can find the login location by going to fgcu.edu, then click on Golfline in the top right-hand corner and scroll down until you see the green button that says DegreeWorks. Click on that button. At the login screen, log in using your Eagle email username and password. From here, you should see something that looks like the screenshot in the presentation. As you scroll down, you will see classes you will have completed by accelerated credit if we have officially received it, and the classes your advisor has registered you for in the upcoming summer and or fall semesters. As you can see, the green check marks represent courses or requirements that are already completed, 
The blue half circles represent courses or requirements that are in progress or pre-registered, and the red circles are requirements that you still have to complete and have not yet been registered for. Please keep the screen open and follow along as we go through the general education program in the next few slides. General education is an important part of your experience here at FGCU and consists of 36 credits which need to be completed prior to graduation, although most students complete their general education courses within their first two years. Gen Ed courses provide you with a wide foundation for your major and future career. Gen Ed courses also expand your worldview, and by taking Gen Ed courses, you may find a completely different path for yourself that you never would have imagined. These courses can be fun as well. We recommend choosing courses you're interested in and subjects you want to learn more about. Now is the time to explore new ideas and concepts, expanding your knowledge of the world around you. As a reminder, it is always best to refer to the FGC website for the most up-to-date information about general education courses as courses are added to the inventory every year. There are five different categories of Gen Ed courses, with each of them having both state core requirements and FGCU requirements. Let's start with the communication category. Communication has a six credit hour requirement, three credits for the state core with composition one, and three credits for FGCU requirements with composition two. ENC is considered a prefix followed by the course number 1101 or 1102. All of the courses offered here at FGCU have a three-letter prefix followed by a four-digit course number. The number in parentheses, three, is how many credit hours you will earn if you successfully pass the course. We would also like to point out the CLWS in parentheses. This stands for College Level Writing Skills, and these are writing intensive courses. Students are required to complete 12 credits of writing intensive classes in order to graduate. This means that these two courses, Comp 1 and Comp 2, meet the requirements of six credits towards that 12 credit hour requirement. Depending on your major, you may need to incorporate additional CLWS courses into your general education or elective courses, but some programs have the additional six credits built in automatically to the degree requirements. This is something that your advisor can talk to you about. As a side note, it is not recommended that you take more than one writing intensive class per semester unless you feel particularly confident in writing. These classes are more in-depth and are writing intensive, meaning you'll go through a significant amount of writing and revision with your work. Also note that the prerequisite symbol in parentheses next to composition two, signifying that there is a prerequisite of taking and passing composition one before you can take the class. Be aware that composition two is not the only course with the prerequisite symbol indicating the need to take composition one before you can take the class. So be on the lookout for this prerequisite symbol in other areas of gen ed. Remember that in the communication category, you must earn a minimum of a C in the courses to satisfy the subject area. Next is the mathematics area. As with the other categories, there's a state core requirement. As a student, you'll have to take and pass either STA 2023 or STA 2037 with a C or better. The majority of all students will be taking STA 2023 statistical methods as STA 2037 statistics with calculus is only recommended for certain engineering and math-based majors and is not offered as frequently. Aside from STA 2023 statistical methods, you will have to take one additional math course for a total of six credits in this category. The other course you choose will be dependent on your major, so be sure to check your curriculum map, which we will go over in more detail in just a minute. Exploratory Advising will be placing you into a math course based on your SAT or ACT scores, any math placement test scores you may have, or any dual enrollment course you have taken. Another unique thing about the mathematics category is that it is entirely possible, based on your math placement, that you will not immediately be able to take a gen ed math class your first semester, as some first year students start their math sequence taking the MAT 1033 Intermediate Algebra course. This is a great class that prepares students for college level math and counts as an elective for your degree. So check with your advisor who can fill you in on the availability of placement tests and which math course works best and or are required by your major. Don't stress, we know that math can be a little confusing and sometimes intimidating. Like with natural science, it is critical that you use your academic resources such as professor office hours, tutoring, and any supplemental instruction to help you succeed in math. The math department also offers free tutoring that you can take advantage of, so don't wait until it's too late. You can individually ask your advisor any questions you have regarding your math placement. 
Gen Ed math courses require a grade of a C or better to meet both the Gen Ed and the college level math requirements. Also refer to the FGCU General Education website for the most up-to-date listing of courses in each general education area as the list is subject to change each year. The next area of general education is the humanities. This category is where your gen ed art history, literature, music, theater, and philosophy courses live, among others. This area of study requires a minimum of nine credit hours, so typically three classes from this category. Remember that three of these credits must come from the state core list, and you must earn a C or better in the state core course. Taking any course within the state core box will satisfy this requirement. That still leaves six credits of your choosing, so an easy way to search for these courses in this area is to use the course attribute GEHM, circled in red on the Gen Ed sheet here, which stands for Gen Ed Humanities. When you search utilizing this attribute on FGCU's course search webpage, you will be able to see all of these humanities courses, as well as times, dates, and professors. There are a few things to consider when selecting courses. The CLWS in parentheses next to a course represents the course as writing intensive, and the INKN signifies an intercultural knowledge class. For the intercultural knowledge INKN Gen Ed competency, students complete six credits in the courses designed to bring a balanced worldview to general education. There are numerous courses with the INKN designation and courses with both INKN and CLWS designations. If you take a course with both a CLWS and INKN attribute, you will satisfy credits in both of these areas. For example, the Gen Ed Humanities course AML 2010, Literature and Culture of the US, has both the INKN and CLWS designations, meaning you would receive three credits towards your intercultural knowledge requirement and three credits towards your college level writing skills requirement. Be aware that the prerequisite symbol is located next to some of these classes as well. This symbol indicates that Composition 1 must have been taken and passed with a C or better before you can take this class. So back to AML 2010. Based on the symbols next to the course, this course would count toward intercultural knowledge and your college writing skills requirement, as well as having a prerequisite of needing to have completed Composition 1 with a C or better. We encourage you to have fun with these classes. Pick a class you would enjoy taking or which interests you the most or a class that might not be within your major, but is within your interest. Keep in mind that if you can't get into a state core your first semester, that's okay. You can always pick one up in a future semester. Always refer to the FGCU general education website for the most up-to-date listings of courses in each general education area as the list is subject to change each year. Next up is the social sciences area. These are course options which focus on areas like history, culture, economics, political science, psychology, sociology, and more. Once again, you will have to choose a three credit course from the state core section, which requires a grade of a C or better, but unlike humanities, depending on your major, you may only have to take a total of six credits in this gen ed category, while some students have to take nine credits. For example, if you are a student with a science intensive major like biology, chemistry, civil engineering, etc., then you would only have to take a three credit hour state core and one additional gen ed social science course for a total of six credits. If your major is a non-science intensive major, such as criminal justice, business, communication, etc., then you would take a total of nine credits in the social sciences, three credits state core and six credits from outside of state core. As with the humanities section, you can search social science courses by using the GESO attribute on the FGCU course search webpage. Also keep in mind the CLWS and INKN courses that can help you meet the writing skills and intercultural knowledge requirements. Additionally, the civic literacy courses AMH 2020 American History Since 1877 or POS 2041 American National Government are both Gen Ed Social Science State Core courses. There are a lot of awesome courses listed here that can match your interests and give you a wide world view. But remember, if you can't get a State Core your first semester, don't panic. You'll be able to pick one up in future semesters. Also refer to the FGCU General Education website for the most up-to-date listings of courses in each general education area as the list is subject to change each year. The next area is Natural Sciences. And much like social sciences, depending on your major, you may have to take six credits or nine credits. If you are a non-science intensive major, focus on the salmon or pink colored section at the bottom. 
you would only have to take one state core class and one additional class for a total of six credits from the section indicated for non-science majors. If you are a science intensive major, for example, biology, chemistry, civil engineering, etc., focus on the light orange colored section at the top. You would have to take nine credits, which would be one state core class and two additional courses for a total of nine credits from the section indicated for science majors. If you are a science intensive major, you should expect to take at least one and in some cases two science courses at a time in order to stay on track for your major, including in your first semester. Don't be afraid to take college level science as there are plenty of resources offered such as professor office hours, tutoring, and supplemental instruction that can help you be successful in these courses. Always keep in mind that in order to satisfy the state core requirement, you must get at least a C in the state core class. There is also another requirement for this section. You must take at least one course that has a lab component. Courses with a lab component are designated by a C or L after the course number. For example, BSC 1010C has a lab component. This lab component takes place in the same classroom as the class and immediately follows the lecture portion of the class. The C indicates combined lab and lecture time. Courses with a separate lab component, such as BSC 1005 and BSC 1005L, are separate classes and must be taken together as they are co-requisites. So when you register for BSC 1005, the lecture for biological science, you would also need to register for BSC 1005L, the lab for biological science, which may be held at a different location and time than BSC 1005. Additionally, each class with a separate lab component will also have a separate grade. So students taking BSC 1005 and BSC 1005L would receive a grade for each class. For courses with separate lectures and labs, you must earn a C or better in each course in order to advance to the next course. For example, you must get a C or better in both CHM 1045 General Chemistry 1 and CHM 1045L General Chemistry 1 lab before you can advance to CHM 1046 General Chemistry 2 and CHM 1046L General Chemistry 2 lab. As with the other sections, be sure to pay attention to prerequisites for a course. For example, CHM 1045L General Chemistry 1 in lab has a prerequisite shown here as an asterisk of MAC 1105 College Algebra. Unlike the other categories, Natural Sciences has three attributes for you to use to search for natural science classes. These attributes are GENC for courses with a combined lecture and lab or field experience, GENA for natural science lectures or components without a lab, and GENL for natural science labs. Using these as you search can point you in the right direction for choosing your classes. As with the other categories, don't stress if you are unable to register for a state core your first semester as you can always take a state core later. Also refer to the FGCU general education website for the most up-to-date listings of courses in each general education area as the list is subject to change each year. These next few slides will help you navigate the choices you will be making about your future, specifically related to your chosen major and its requirements. You can view a list of the undergraduate programs available at FGCU using the QR code here. You can view the programs by college or by name. Clicking on the major you are interested in will take you to the website for that major where you can access the program's degree plan. The website for each program provides you with a wealth of information, including the most recent program requirements, the curriculum map, and information about other opportunities that the program or department provides to students, such as research, service, and internships. You can also connect with faculty through the program website. Each undergraduate major here at FGCU has a degree plan, which is a four-year map to graduation. The goal being that if you follow the degree plan as closely as possible, you will graduate on time and in four years. These degree plans also offer suggestions as to what gen ed courses are recommended for your major and act as examples of what courses you should take. Some majors are more restrictive than others. For example, some majors allow for electives or free choice in certain areas, such as in the gen ed humanities area, but in other areas of the curriculum map tells you to take certain classes since there are requirements in the major. The biology degree plan shown here as an example outlines exactly what courses to take in the general education natural sciences category. Additionally, some majors also have free electives where students have the freedom to select any course and those are spread out throughout the degree plan as well if applicable. 
The degree plans also outline courses that are considered critical at different points in your academic career, so you know to prioritize those courses at certain times. Degree plans will change as requirements for the programs change, which is determined by your catalog year. This information will also match your degree works audit. You can refer to your degree plan to take some of the guessing out of what courses you should be taking. Degree plans also allow you to see what your future in the major will look like. The degree plan outlines upper level course requirements as well as targets to keep you on track. Your academic advisor will create an individualized plan for you using your major's degree plan as a starting place for helping you complete your degree requirements in a timely manner based on your unique situation. Many of FGCU's academic programs have milestones that students are required to meet in order to remain enrolled in their major. These milestones can include specific courses, course grades, and or GPA levels. Students who are not compliant with academic milestones may be required to reselect their academic majors, so make sure you pay close attention to these expectations. Here at FGCU, we use a lot of technology and many different systems that will contribute to your overall success. We will go over each of these systems and how you will use these systems throughout your time at FGCU. We'll start with Eagle Email. At this point, everyone should have access to their Eagle Email account. Your Eagle Email is the official means of communication between you and the university. You must check your Eagle Email frequently, recommended at least once per day. Professors, the university, and your advisor will only utilize Eagle Email to communicate with you. You are responsible for checking and responding to emails promptly. Not checking is not an excuse. If you have not already done so, we recommend adding this email to your mail app or downloading the Outlook app on your smartphone for easy access. You can access your Eagle email by using the QR code on the slide. Next is Duo Mobile. FGCU has a two-factor authentication system that must be set up in order to log into Golfline. This software keeps your information safe. The process includes your FGCU username and password and a phone or tablet, preferably the student's cell phone. If you have not already done so, you will need to set this up in order to register and be sure that you are entering your personal information to be able to verify authentication. If you have questions or need assistance on Duo Mobile, you can contact Information Technology Services at 239-590-1188 or at helpdesk at fgcu.edu. You can find more information on setting this up by using the QR code on the presentation. Moving on to Canvas. Canvas is the learning management system where students access information on their courses. Closer to the start of the semester, each of your professors will publish the Canvas page for your courses where you can access the syllabus, view assignments, announcements, and more. Next is Golfline. Golfline gives you direct access to your personal records and institutional information. This is where you can access your personal, student, financial aid information, and any holds on your account that could affect your registration. This is also the system that you'll be using to register for courses. Lastly is DegreeWorks. DegreeWorks organizes student coursework in an easy to read report summarizing completed and missing degree requirements. This is also a helpful tool to see the credits you have transferred in and how they have been articulated. There are other great features you can use on DegreeWorks, including a GPA calculator and a what if degree tool that we will go over later in the presentation. We mentioned Golfline in the previous slide, and this is the system you will use to register for courses. As long as you've cleared the holds on your account, you should be able to register upon completing your orientation advising appointment session. If you are unable to make changes to your own schedule, your exploratory advisor can assist you. In future semesters, priority registration is based on the number of credits earned. This does not include the credits you are currently enrolled in. You can view these dates and important deadlines, including payment deadlines, and more on the academic calendar and Eagle Priority Registration websites, which are linked on this slide. When it comes to picking courses, we want you to know that we are here for you in exploratory advising. We first recommend looking at any general education requirements you have left. The general education program allows you to explore courses in a variety of different subject areas. You can find the link to the general education sheet to review these courses on the screen. You can also explore common prerequisites in the course catalog and even search through degree plans on the program's website to look into the courses you would take for your intended major. This is a great time to pull up your degree works to use as a tool to see the remaining requirements. Another great feature you can use on degree works is the what if feature. 
This is a fun tool to explore what if you majored in these programs. Simply click the What If tab on the left-hand side, select the term you are enrolling in at FGCU, select a program you would like to explore from the drop-down menu, and select the major and click Process. This will be a good tool for you to explore majors that you may be interested in pursuing, as it shows what requirements you have completed and remaining if you pursued a specific academic program. You can also save this What If evaluation as a PDF to refer to later. When it comes to registration, we recommend using Google Chrome and opening two separate browser tabs. In the first tab, we recommend opening the FGCU schedule search page, which is linked in the slide. And for the second tab, we recommend being logged into Golfline. On Golfline, you will also find another tool for registration called Schedule Planner. There is also a document your exploratory advisor will provide to you that you can use to view detailed registration instructions on how to register for courses through Schedule Planner and or the FGCU course search page. This document goes over how to use Schedule Planner and how to search for courses using the FGCU schedule search and how to add and drop courses in Golfline. These step-by-step -step instructions are a great resource for you to use when it comes to registering for courses. Schedule Planner is a tool that you can access within Golfline. This tool helps you create potential schedules of available classes based on the specific courses that you want to take, as well as any scheduling restrictions or preferences that you have to work around. You are also able to register for a potential schedule directly through Schedule Planner by adding a schedule to the shopping cart and submitting it. For more information on how to use the Schedule Planner tool, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen. You may have the option to add to a waitlist for a course that is full. If you add yourself to a waitlist, you are getting in line for a seat in the course. This does not guarantee you a spot in the course, but when a student drops the course, an email is sent to the next person on the waitlist via Eagle email. You can see if a course has a waitlist in the comments section on the FGCU schedule search page. You have 24 hours from when the email is sent to act and enroll in the course. This requires you checking your Eagle email frequently and logging into Golfline to enroll in the course when notified. If you do not register yourself within 24 hours of being notified, you are dropped from the waitlist and lose your spot in line. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to add a class when on a waitlist, you can scan the QR code on the screen. When registering for courses, there may be times that you receive a registration error. This key should help you understand why you receive that error and help guide you in understanding and finding an alternative course option. Please refer to this list if you received a registration error. Registration errors can happen for a variety of reasons. It means you either might be not eligible for the course or that you need to do something different to register, such as adding both courses for a co-requisite lecture and lab or getting instructor permission. Refer to this list and ask your exploratory advisor if you are unsure why you are getting an error. Now that we have reviewed all this information, resources, and how to register for classes, there are a few final pieces of information to remember. Always review your holds on Golfline, as some can prevent you from being able to register. All FGCU students must complete the mandatory student training in Canvas. This Canvas course includes components for wellness, career preparation, active shooter training, and hazing prevention. Once you have completed all parts of the mandatory student training, your MT hold will be cleared. You need to have this complete before you will be able to register for your second semester of classes. For transcripts, be sure to have your final transcripts from any of your previous institutions sent over to FGCU as soon as possible. Official transcripts should be sent to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. If you earned an AA degree at your previous institution, you will need to send your final transcript with your AA degree posted, which can sometimes take some time to certify beyond when your final grades are posted. A final tip for success. Do not forget to check your university email. Continue to check your Eagle email as this is where you will find out important messages and information from various offices here at FGCU. Checking your email will help you be successful at FGCU and stay up to date on university information. We have a split model for advising at FGCU. What this means for you is that in your first year, you will have a professional advisor from the Exploratory Advising Office. After you reach certain milestones according to your chosen major, you will move to a professional advisor in that area. You will be able to view the specific criteria for each college and major on the Exploratory Advising website. At a minimum, you will need to earn 24 credit hours and a 2.0 GPA. Most colleges and selective programs have additional criteria, such as minimum grades in specific courses. 
When recommending courses, your exploratory advisor is prioritizing these requirements for transitioning to college advising, which also align with your major's degree plan. If you don't have a major selected yet, you will continue working with your exploratory advisor until you make a decision that aligns with your strengths, interests, and goals. Throughout your first year, there are some advising-related items that you will need to complete. Each semester, you should get into the habit of checking your holds on Golfline. There may be holds associated with an unpaid financial balance and advising meter requirements, documents needed, etc. Some of these holds will prevent you from registering for the following semester, making it extra important to check up on these. You will also need to meet with your exploratory advisor at least once each semester for an individual pre-registration meeting advising appointment. This appointment is required in order to register and remove a hold for the following semester. We will discuss course planning, major selection, major criteria requirements, and any other items necessary to your success. Lastly, you will be assigned a registration date based on the number of credit hours you have previously earned. You can find these priority registration dates on the academic calendar. At your assigned day and time, if you have taken care of all holds and met with your academic advisor, you will be able to register for the next semester. As you will quickly learn, college is much different than high school. It can be much more challenging for a number of reasons, which is why FGCU provides lots and lots of services for our students. These are just a few of the resources you have available to you as a student at FGCU. We encourage you to use the QR code on this page and explore some of these resources. We went over a lot of information in this presentation, but know that we are here to support you during your journey at FGCU. Come see our Office of Exploratory Advising and the Center for Career and Exploratory Advising located in the main student plaza. Our office can be reached by phone or email. Our office phone number is 239-745-4422 and our office email is explore at fgcu.edu. Advising appointments can be scheduled online through the Exploratory Advising website or by calling our office. Remember to also read through our website at www.fgcu.edu slash explore as well. We have detailed information and resources that are updated regularly on the website. Follow us on social media for important updates and to keep an eye on our fun adventures. This concludes our advising presentation. We are so excited you have chosen FGCU as your new home and look forward to hearing from you and answering any questions you may have. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Our whole team is dedicated to making sure your college experience is an awesome one, and we want to congratulate you on your accomplishment. Go Eagles and wings up!